Tomasa Ciampa versus Braun Breaker for the NXT Championship in the main event. As noted, Ciampa also wearing the Kratos God of War costume. And if we're being honest, this is a much better costume than what Stu Grayson had on Dynamite. So Braun Breaker. It's funny because Stu Grayson wears that outfit most of the time. He actually does, yes. <laughs> Ciampa wears this maybe once a year. Uh, Braun Breaker is, of course, a Steiner, but they can't call him that, even though he does the diving bulldog and the power slam, and he barks like a dog. And now he is calling himself a genetic freak and also doing a Frankensteiner. Dude, he did a Frankensteiner. So he did the uh, catch the guy and turn it into the power slam Rick Steiner spot. I mean, Braun Breaker, in storyline... Is all of the best of Rick and Scott yep. rolled up into one guy. That is the character, yes. But we can't say that he's a Steiner. No. We cannot say that he's second generation. We cannot talk about who his father is, even though it's fucking patently obvious. And they make no mistake about it. Yeah. It's not just that uh, it's out there and they don't reference it. It's referenced constantly who this man's family tree and where he came from. And they bark at him, and he barks back at them, because his dad was the dog-faced gremlin. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. He's very, very good. He has been doing this just over a year. Dude, for a guy that's been wrestling just over a year, he is very, very good. He's awesome. Yes. But he has also been doing it just over a year. There's a point where he goes for the bulldog, and I don't know what they had planned, but he slipped and fell on his ass. And I assume that was not what they had planned. And Champa is... Awesome. Because he doesn't miss a beat. He doesn't panic. He doesn't freak out. He just walks over, grabs him, and the match just continues. They don't make a big deal out of it. Shit happens. They just move on. And we we had a speech. I think you have actually your speech but a couple of shows ago about how when something goes wrong, you can't let it become eight things that go wrong. So they went wrong here. They just worked around it. They just, just moved past it and did their match. So uh, at some point, Braun Breaker is bleeding. Chomp is the fairy tale. Yeah, I wonder why. They did about side, and Chompa gave him a DDT on the cement. <laughs> and uh, old Braun Breaker, he decides I'm going to headbutt the cement on the way down. Well, Brian. And he comes up bleeding. He is a Steiner. I know. But, <laughs> They're like, kind of nuts. Don't don't be that kind of Steiner. Don't do that. I, I would discourage him from DDTing himself on the uh, forehead on the, on the concrete. So, But he kicks out of the fairy tale ending, which no one has ever done before. First man to kick out of that. And Champa, now here it's a, in character, but still awesome. He doesn't panic. He's a little surprised, but he just goes to the corner, hits a big giant knee strike, goes to the corner, hits a big giant knee strike, hits a second fairy tale ending, and this one's good enough, and he wins. Tommaso Champa is the man. And as much as I hated the show, and let's be clear, I hated the show. This is a very good main event. It's a very good main event, and the semi main was a very good match, and the women's match was a good match. Like, everyone was hating on this show, and I thought the show, I thought it was a good show. Was it a great show? No. Was it an NXT takeover? Would it have been the worst takeover ever? Yes. Was it better than than 90% and maybe all of the NXT 2.0 shows I've seen? Yes. I thought this was a very, very good main event. I thought that Ciampa was great. I thought that Braun Breaker, given his experience level, was great in this match. And the key to the finish is, it's two things. One of them Dave mentioned, which is that this audience that WWE has, if he would have won this belt in like his fourth or fifth weekend, they're going to turn on the guy. You don't deserve it. And so you beat the guy, you get the fans feeling like he does deserve it, and then you give it to him and these fans are happy. The other thing, which I think is is uh, it's actually very important, is great athlete, great amateur. But what happens when he goes up to the main roster? If he just runs through everybody here and wins a title, destroys everybody, gets called up, shows up on Raw, and they go, we want you to lose to Jeff Hardy. How's the guy, how's the guy respond to this? He needs to learn how to do a job. Mm. He needs to learn how to lose. He needs to learn that, like, you ain't always going to win these matches, buddy. And you're not always going to win these matches by having someone run in or interference. Like, sometimes you're going to go in there, and the other guy's the better man, and he beats you clean in the middle of the ring. That's something that people have to learn as well. And so he got that. He got, uh, you know, the sympathy for not beating Ciampa here because the people like him. Then eventually they're going to want him to win the title. So I thought the finish was was great. 
I thought they did a good job, and I thought this was a very good match to end this show. So but I still believe that Dynamite was a superior uh, show. Dynamite gets my vote. Yes. Yeah. CM Punk versus Garcia. Fast moving, neck breaker, leg sub hold on. I got a P. P gets leg hold. <laughs> 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 this was 10 and 8, 21. Clothesline. Pil- Pillman punches back and forth. How'd Pillman get in this match? I don't know. How What's happening? It? If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.